What's up Smart Homers? My name is Aaron. In this video I'm going to show you the Home Assistant Yellow which is being shipped right about now. It's a device meant for beginners and DIY enthusiasts alike but I'm going to give you a good look at the hardware and then go over what it is and who it's for. Home Assistant Yellow is kind of like Home Assistant's 8th birthday present but the present's actually for you. Crowdfunded by a community of tinkerers and DIY enthusiasts, it originally had a goal of $140,000, but ended up at 511% funded, a total of $716,000. That's almost three quarters of a million dollars. The device has a transparent case that has a frosted interior surface, giving it a unique translucent look. The top of the case, the part that has the frosting on the inside, has the Home Assistant tree logo etched into it and holes in the back side for the various ports. The back side has two vent holes, an unassigned blue button, a red factory reset button, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two USB 2.0 ports, a USB-C port, an ethernet port, and a power jack. There are actually two versions of this hub. There's the standard version, and then there's the PoE, or Power Over Ethernet version. The one I have is the standard version, but if you're using the PoE version, power would be supplied via the ethernet port, and you wouldn't need to use that power jack. There are four knurled thumb screws holding the top onto the base, which also act as feet for the device to sit on. Unscrewing these allows you to remove the top of the case and reveals the beauty of the yellow PCB underneath. The device is powered by a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 with 2GB of RAM and 16GB of eMMC storage. This CM4 does not have a Bluetooth radio. There's a custom heatsink mounted to the CM4 and there's an M.2 slot for expandable storage. It comes with a built-in Zigbee module from Silicon Labs, which they've said will support Matter in the future. On the yellow board are a set of GPIO pins that can be used for adding additional components. The power supply that comes with it is a 12 volt 2 amp supply, and it also comes with an ethernet cable. I picked up a 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe solid state drive to use to expand the storage a bit. A few notes about the ports. As many of you know, the reason why they chose USB 2.0 ports instead of USB 3.0 ports is because USB 3.0 tends to interfere with 2.4 GHz signals, one of which is Zigbee, of course. That's why on devices like the Home Assistant Blue that has USB 3.0 ports, you need to add a Zigbee dongle with a USB extension cable to get that dongle away from the device itself. The USB-C port on this device is used for debugging and can also be used for recovery of this device. So let's talk about the design of this device. I have to admit when I first saw the renders that they showed when they announced this device, I was not super thrilled. I really didn't think they looked that great. However, seeing it up close, the frosted texturing on the inside of the cover really does give it a unique and intriguing look. When the status LEDs come on inside the case, the frosted texturing really diffuses the light and makes it look really cool. I still think that the Home Assistant Blue with its metal blue cover looks better, but that's just my opinion. If I could change this case design, the one thing I would do would be to take that tree logo that's etched on the top off and replace it with a standard Home Assistant logo that we all know. You'll probably also be thinking that the lack of fans means that this thing is going to get way too hot. As I mentioned before, there are slots on the back of the device that allow it to breathe. And the idea behind this design is that natural convection should take away enough heat from that heatsink where forced convection isn't needed. I don't think this design is as effective as the aluminum raspberry pie case that I use for my test setup because that one actually uses the entire case as a heatsink. Initially, the yellow stays pretty cool, but I'm not sure how it's going to handle it long term, especially when I add more devices, but I'll definitely be posting my results on my social media accounts like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So if you're interested, follow me over there. The Nabucasa team did address the lack of Z-Wave radio. This being that the price and licensing of a product with two wireless radios wasn't going to work. I suspect this is why the standard model's CM4 doesn't have Bluetooth on board either, 
along with the fact that they didn't want Bluetooth to interfere with the Zigbee radio. I do think that the lack of a Z-Wave radio is the one thing that hinders the Home Assistant Yellow from being a mainstream competitor to the SmartThings hub. Both SmartThings and Hubitat come with a Z-Wave right out of the box, and not having that radio really decreases the number of devices that are compatible right out of the box. Now obviously, Home Assistant has way more devices compatible than the other platforms. Now that being said, the fact that this Zigbee radio will speak Matter in the future means that if Matter ever takes off, this Home Assistant Yellow is going to be ahead of the game. Even though the device doesn't come with Z-Wave out of the box, there are a couple ways to add it. And one of them is actually using a module that mounts right inside the box of the device. Getting started with the Home Assistant Yellow is a breeze. Just plug in the Ethernet cable, plug in power, and you're good to go. Head to a web browser and navigate to homeassistant.local colon 8123 or the IP address that your router has assigned to it colon 8123. And begin the setup process. Once you've gotten through the initial setup, You'll see in Devices and Services that the built-in Zigbee radio is automatically recognized by Home Assistant and ZHA is already configured with it. That is awesome. I did test out this device with Zigbee to MQTT by deleting the ZHA integration and then installing the Z2M and MQTT add-ons and it worked once I figured out the configuration for Z2M. For this config, I had to set the port and adapter as I've shown here. You can add Z-Wave devices to the Home Assistant Yellow using a USB Z-Wave radio, but there's another solution. Because of the exposed GPIO pins on the Yellow's PCB, we can add a supported Z-Wave module. The list of Z-Wave coordinators in the Home Assistant docs show that there are a number of Raspberry Pi compatible Z-Wave modules that are supported by Home Assistant. I'm not going to go over how to set up one of these Z-Wave modules, but if you're interested, let me know in the comments. If you want to add Bluetooth devices to the Home Assistant Yellow, unfortunately you're going to have to add a Bluetooth radio because the CM4 inside of this device doesn't have Bluetooth. During my testing, I tried out the red factory reset button, which does factory reset the device by holding down the red button for 10 seconds during boot. Overall, I think this device is a step in the right direction for a piece of hardware that complements the software we all know and love. I also think that the Home Assistant Yellow is a good start for someone who wants to try Home Assistant for the first time. The fact that it comes configured with Zigbee right out of the box means that many of the most popular devices in the smart home world are going to work with it right out of the box. As I mentioned before, the icing on the cake would be if it had Z-Wave built in, but this is a start. As a device for tinkerers and enthusiasts, I think this is a perfect device. I think the exposed GPI opens are really cool, as well as the fact that you can swap out compute modules and NVMe cards. Playing with this device has me super excited to see what the Nabucasa team releases next. I'm hoping for a Home Assistant Purple, and I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on it. I know they're releasing a SkyConnect Zigbee slash Matter slash Thread USB dongle, and I definitely want to play around with that. So that's pretty much it for this one. If you like this video, please hit the like button to help out the channel. And if you have a question or there's something I didn't address, leave that in the section where those things go. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you.